From the News Channel 5 Network and Out and About newspaper, this is Out and About Today. Good evening and welcome to Out and About Today. I'm Pam Wheeler. On tonight's show, Brent brings us all the details on MTSU's LGBT College Conference. Later in the Entertainment Outlook, Chuck will preview the Threesome web series. But we open the show tonight with our weekly Buzz About segment. Tonight's topics, after the Oscars and Nashville Pride. I'm joined by my co-host, Chuck and Brent. And we have a special guest panelist tonight. You may know her as a campaign manager for Megan Barry for mayor or the president of Nashville Pride. That's right, <laughs> Claudia Husky joins us in the discussion. Welcome, Claudia. Thank you, Pam. We're so glad for you're having here. us. Oh, well, thank you. I'm we, we thrilled to, to be here. Well, we love to bring in some you know, new voices. Mm -hmm. I get tired of these guys. It's nice <laughs> to have a female on the panel. So we last uh, month we did not preview the Oscars. Right. I yeah. don't know why we, we forgot. We had so much to do. We didn't have time. So much. <laughs> right. So I just I know it's a little bit. It's the month the month after. But right. I want to talk on a couple things. Okay. So first, Neil Patrick Harris. We're going to run a clip and show some of the highlights. I want to know how do you think he did? Chuck, we're going to start with you. Okay, I thought he was good, not great. I thought he was better on the Tonys. I thought he was better on the Emmys. Um, some of the jokes just seemed a little corny. Some seemed a little uh, not so tasteful or maybe just kind of cringeworthy. You know, people kind of went, oh, I don't know about that one. So, you know, it's always, I don't think you're ever going to be the perfect toast on the Oscars, but, but I was expecting just a little more from him. Like, just when he, the joke he did about Oprah, we just, you know, it was like, mm. I wasn't crazy about that. Claudia, what, what's your take? I completely agree. I think that he, he his jokes did land a little flat, and unfortunately, when you have hosts that were as fabulous as Ellen and Billy Crystal, and they set the bar really, really high, it's really hard to match. I mean, even like Jane Lynch, I thought, was just so fabulous. Mm -hmm. So it, it just sometimes in contrast, especially when we just had that big SNL anniversary <laughs> for the 40th, and you had all these great funny jokes, and you saw this fabulous talent, and then it transitioned over. And yeah, it, yeah, it was kind it of a want want. That's yeah. really what. Brent, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it really was. And I mean, I, I know that he didn't necessarily write all those jokes himself, and that there were writers. And he, of course, approved those. So, I mean, I, I, he's not in it alone, is what I'm saying. Which, But at the same time, I just felt like it was, and the whole, like, underwear bit, I was just like, ah, oh, that just seems like a really weak attempt to just take your clothes off. And I mean, and you're wearing white briefs. I mean, come on. It just so seemed like a grasp for something at that point. That was a Birdman reference at the Tidy Whitey. Exactly. Thing. But at the same time, I mean, really, I mean, it, just, it fell flat. I mean, you've got all you've got all of Hollywood. It's kind of the biggest night they have, and there he is in his drawers. I mean, I don't know. It just it just seemed out of place for me. And maybe I'm maybe I'm out of their demographic on that one. I don't know. But it just seemed a little. And I felt like the audience kind of was laughing out of uh, out of obligation. Obligation. Yeah, <laughs> I we do that. The, the Birdman thing. I like. I just thought it was brave to do to go out and well, tidy no, whitey. You're right. I was like, hey, that's no, fair. I, I would not do it. It just seemed <laughs> uh, it just seemed kind of weird at the Oscars. You know, it's kind of like with James Franco and Anne Hathaway, and it just felt a little awkward the yeah. whole time. It just had that same feeling to me, especially with poor Octavia Spencer. Yes. I mean, you know, just like, is she the security guard over this weird briefcase thing that we don't really understand what's happening? Right. And, and they right. kept going back to her. Yeah. And yeah. it seems like one of the prerequisites for a host is to be able to pronounce the, the, the names of those oh, please, presenters. Yeah. You know, and maybe one or two times is funny, but when you constantly stumble over them, I mean, I'm guilty of mispronouncing names. I know sometimes it's yes, not that are. easy. <laughs> but I'm not hosting the Oscars. That's the true. Oscars. <laughs> okay, so we're going three thumbs down, and I'm going to give it a thumbs up just because I like I'm a well, big fan of effort. his. effort, I mean, you yeah. know. Yeah, for effort. I'm giving it right in the middle, yeah. Okay, so we're going to um, skip over what I told you we're going to talk about okay. in the interest of time. And we're going to we're gonna um, parlay from the Oscars and talk about some of the nominees or winners and what you're looking forward to in the new year. Okay. Uh, this year. This current year, 2015. Okay. So, Chuck, what are your picks for this? I'm really excited. Eddie Redmayne, who won the Oscar, is coming up in a movie called The Danish Girl. And it's inspired by the true story. It's a true story. It's a portrait of a marriage. And it says, uh, what do you do when someone you love wants to change? So, I'm really excited about this. I love Eddie Redmayne. And then I'm also looking very forward. This is coming out in May. But Reese Witherspoon and Sofia Vergara are coming out on a movie called Hot Pursuit. Suit. And Reese, of course, she was nominated for an Oscar, and she's playing this bumbling cop, and she's trying to, you know, I think, help Sofia Vergara. I think that's going to be hilarious. I do, too. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to that. It wasn't on my radar until I got that info from you. Claudia, what's your pick? I am just excited for anything Bradley Cooper does this right. next You're year. You're not alone. Because, <laughs> honestly, I thought he was so great in American Sniper, and even though I think the Oscar was, you know, worthy of its, a, a, its winner, certainly, but I am very excited for all of his future projects. So I think he's just a star on the rise. And so we have the picture here with uh, Jay 
what's Jennifer Lawrence and Bradley mm -hmm. Cooper for Serena? Yes, that's coming out in March. So yes, and but you know we'll, we'll see how we'll see how they do. We're we're keeping our fingers crossed. I'm giving it uh, good good Thumbs vibes up for Bradley Cooper. <laughs> right. yeah. I know we all get that. So um, let's move on to Pride. Are we ready? Does anybody need to take an Oscar dig on anyone? Oh, we're no. good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I do want to give a plug though to Lady yeah. Gaga. I thought oh. she was fantastic, and with Julie Andrews and The Sound of Music, and it came out in 50 years, and I just like I cried. I really did when Julie Andrews came out, and I thought that was a really beautiful and moving um, tribute to them. Agree. Yeah, agree. we all agree. And I was just telling you, Lady Gaga is going to be on the new season of American Horror Story next mm -hmm. year. So exactly. I'm I'm all about Gaga. I'm sure so we'll talk about big. that. Exactly. Yeah. I'm sure we will. Okay, Nashville Pride. Uh, we all are big fans. At, we talk about it the month before Pride, then at, we're at Pride, then we talk about it again. We were with you, the Pride show, at Live at the Park. Well, it wasn't live, but anyway. What news can you break here on the show about Nashville Pride? We need something that no one else knows. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Nashville Pride is being driven by Bridgestone this year. They are our big, big sponsor, and we are very excited because it is moving to the end of the month. So we are going to have a whole Pride month, and it's basically going to start off with, you know, just events throughout the month with a gay 5k we're going to do a night out with the nashville sounds we're going to have a comedy night at zanies we've just got all sorts of fun stuff in the works a uh, drag brunch at pop nashville so you know leading up to our normal events like the pre-party and just the um party bus and you know all the things that we normally do to promote pride but we're very fortunate that it's not going to intersect with bonnery this year or cma fest and so we really feel like we have the opportunity Opportunity to kind of channel a lot of this energy and support. Hopefully, we'll be having a favorable Supreme Court decision in June, no, so we can wonderful. just really make it all about pride and and bringing new people into the festival that haven't really thought about it before. But you know, maybe when we meet them at the Nashville Sounds, they'll think, "Oh, pride! I should go to that. That would be so fun this year." I love it. So it's the last weekend. It's not Father's Day weekend anymore. That's Correct. new. Yeah, June 26, 27, that mm -hmm. Public Square. We're almost out of time, so tell us how people can become mini sponsors by joining the Friends with Benefits. Absolutely. So our Friends with Benefits program is a program that we do for our sponsors and donors, individual donors, throughout the year. And so we have great events. We're having a Spirit of Tennessee on March 12th, and that's going to be out at the Green Door Gourmet. It's taking place of the Two Chefs, Two Visions that we've had in years past. And leave us with the website because we're almost out. It's yes, uh, nationalpride.org. And and please uh, consider Friends with Benefits. We would love to have you. Do it. It's a great deal. You get a lot for a little. Yes. So that's all the time we have. Don't go away. Brent is up next with all the details on MTSU's upcoming LGBT co college conference. Stay with us.